Hello everyone, this is Ramlay from 40k Theories and welcome to the April 2021 edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, then click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Also I apologise if my voice sounds a little bit off, I've been fighting yet another throat infection. Good times are had by all. But without further ado, let's jump into the questions. Thomas Badkin asks, what is the Emperor's and the Primarch's favourite food? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> um, I think with Lehman Russ it might be elk, because there was something in regards to the um, recruitment rituals of the Space Wolves saying that an aspirant has to eat an entire elk and drink an entire barrel of ale because Lehman Russ was said to have done so. So I imagine that elk must be Lehman Russ's favourite food. Voice of the Emperor asks, do bolters come in buckshot? The closest you're going to get in terms of buckshot for bolters is with Metal Storm Frag Rounds, which are bolter shells that detonate before impacting the target so they pepper the target with a storm of shrapnel. What do you think would happen if Slanesh were killed in the warp? Again, I have absolutely no idea. This is a topic that's far too big for one of these Q&A sessions. Brent Fees asks, what is your favourite Necromunda gang, both thematically and statistically? It's a toss up between either the Spire Hunters or the Ratskin Renegades. I remember hearing something about House Goliath being failed Space Marines, but I've heard this explained as either Imperial Fist aspirants who failed their trials and lived, or as some Gilder trying to make his own version of a start he's failing. Have either of these ever been true? And if so, has it since been retconned? Uh, no, it's not true. Because originally House Goliath was just a house full of punk rock bodybuilders, basically. There was some insinuation that House Goliath was based in their culture off of orcs because the older models and older artwork for House Goliath did depict them with orcish symbols on their bodies and on their equipment, clothing, etc. But with the advent of 3rd edition Necromunda that's been changed to the fact that House Goliath were debatably a species of ab human now created by House Escher and House Van Sar to serve as a slave caste. However, the Goliaths eventually rebelled and over time became a clan house of their own. If rumours about 30k 2.0 prove to be true, do you plan to expand your Night Lord's collection? Yes, I do. I still need to get the, um, the Contacar Terminators for my army, to be honest. Pentadeus asks, How much credence do you give the idea of Maui from Moana being a space marine? I've not seen Moana, so I can't really comment. Um, but isn't he meant to be like some kind of Polynesian god? So wouldn't that make him closer to being a Primarch? I don't know, just saying. If a renegade chapter were to pose as a loyalist chapter, how long could they theoretically keep up the charade? As long as the plot demands. <laughs> um, funnily enough, there was an instance in um, the third Fabius Bell novel, Man Flayer, where they, the consortium goes to an Imperial world disguised as loyalist space marines, and as they're basically the centre of a huge parade, with everyone's saying like, oh, the space marines are back, yay! One of the uh, consortium members says to bio over a private Vox channel, this is really embarrassing. To which Bar responds saying, just shut up, smile and wave, that's a good servant of the corpse emperor. <laughs> I just thought that was a great little segment. Zero Hits asks, given the dramatic events of Cadia and the return of the Silent King, do you think there could be Necron Lords who might seek a more direct alliance with the Imperium? It's entirely possible. Necron Lords are shown to be incredibly diverse in their mindsets, so there's bound to be at least one who thinks an alliance with the Imperium is a good idea. Austin Horner asks, in the novel Mephiston's City of Light, Mephiston and the company of Blood Angels come under attack by a group of Harlequins who use a gas that not only causes the Blood Angels to see the Harlequins as traitorous Astartes, but also falls many of them, including Mephiston, into thinking that they are falling to the Black Rage. Are there any other instances of such a false fall being created? Not to my knowledge, but that's not to say that it hasn't happened in a previous Blood Angel story. It's possible, but to my knowledge, I've not heard of any other instances of this. Griffin of Might asks, would the Grey Knights be welcomed into the Black Library and make use of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> the Grey Knights as a chapter will not be welcomed into the Black Library at all. The, the fact that you can count on one hand the amount of Inquisitors that have actually been given access to the Black Library, and even then, in half the cases, they're kept as prisoners. Like with Inquisitor Chevak, he was invited to tour the Black Library, but he was kept as a prisoner until he stole the Atlas Infernal and broke out and escaped, and even then he still had the Harlequins on his tail. You might get 
a Grey Knight being invited into the Black Library, you know, like a Grand Master or Supreme Grand Master, something like that, but the Grey Knights as a chapter will not be invited into the Black Library because, let's be honest, the Eldar are not going to go, hey, let's get these, you know, brutish gorillas with force weapons and give them access to our, you know, sacred texts and all the information of the universe. Not going to happen. Do the Mechanicus make use of psychers outside of Astropaths and Navigators? Not to my knowledge, but I know there has been instances of tech priests who have demonstrated some psychic abilities, because there is one in the audio drama Heart of Rage who ends up taking control of a of a, of a Tyranid hive ship. It's very crazy that story, so I advise you to check it out, it's pretty good, but crazy. If enough orcs believe that they were female orcs, would female orcs come into being? I sincerely doubt it. Chief Surgeon asks, what are the requirements for homebrew of the week? You need to submit lore and the accompanying artwork to the 40k Theories Facebook page. No more than 10 pages, because let's be honest ladies and gentlemen, please think of poor Marina. She's the one who has to read all these. Um, so yeah, basically that. Ghost Reaper asks, Why did Belisarius call Call Trazen an abomination, even though the Necrons are everything the Mechanicus aspire to be with their devotion to metal over the human body? Because they're Xenos. It's pretty much that simple. Um, because the bulk of humanity, alien bad, alien unclean, alien need to go purge and burn. That's basically the mindset of most of humanity. And even if that wasn't the case specifically, you know, what does Trazen look like at first glance? You know, he's a robot, yeah. But what does he actually look like? Abominable intelligence. Now whether Necrons are truly abominable intelligences or whatever in regards to their personality engrams, it's a somewhat debatable issue, but A. He's an alien, and B, he's an AI. Both are big no-nos. Does the Sanguinor provide assistance to Blood Angel's successor chapters? Yes. Will maintaining the original Nine Loyalist Legions have been practical in the modern 40k setting compared to splitting them apart into separate chapters? That's a huge logistical debate which I will not get into at this point in time because there isn't enough time. <laughs> Asbatiz asks, if a Space Marine's gene seed is removed while they are living and healthy, would they die, lose functionality, organic regenerative repairability, and or fighting capacity once the gene seed is removed? No, because we know there are instances where a protonoid gland can be removed from a Space Marine while they're still alive. This is shown in the novel Pandorax with Epimetheus, because Epimetheus even turns around and states that, well, the narrator states, that Epimetheus was originally a Dark Angel, but had his original progenoid glands removed and replaced with those derived directly from the genetic material of the Emperor. So progenoid glands can be swapped out between, you know, different Astartes while they're still alive. So I doubt, you know, say you got a Blood Angel and you remove his progenoid glands, it's not really going to do much, apart from, like, you know, make him a little bit uncomfortable because there's now a big gaping hole in his neck or for the time being until that closes up, but that's not an issue entirely. And finally, Angerous Angel asks, Is there any evidence suggesting that the Harad's time-altering ability can affect a Necron to the point where the metallic form can decompose like a piece of rusting metal? And if so, would the Necron's reanimation protocols kick in? I see no reason why not initially. I mean, I know the Necrons themselves have bodies that are like millions upon millions of years old in some cases, but this is pretty much due to the fact that most of these Necrons were kept in stasis rather than, you know, you know, still being active for like 65 million years. So it's theoretically possible, but we don't know quite enough about the properties and characteristics of Necrodermis to say otherwise. So chalk this up into the maybe pile? but we can't really say for certain at this point in time because I don't think there's ever been an instance where the Necrons have actually faced off against the Hrud. At least not that I can think of off the top of my head, so it's possible, but we don't actually have a way of knowing at this point in time. And that concludes this edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, then click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Until next time, this has been Remlays from 40k Theories, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.